Hey everybody, it's Ants Manitoba here, and in this video, we'll be going over Formica Bradley. Before this video begins, if you're not already following my Instagram, go ahead and do so. I post regularly and give you updates and possibly even behind the scenes looks on some of these videos before they release. You can also DM me and I will respond to you, whether it's an ID or just a friendly message. So go ahead and follow Ants Manitoba on Instagram. Thanks guys, and let's get right into the video. Before we get too complex, let's start a little more simple. These are ants. Ants are in the order of Hymenoptera. There's around 12,000 total species known in the world right now, but there's a pretty good chance that there's a lot of subspecies around the world right now that we don't even know about because of small details that would be super hard to see with your own eyes. So it's definitely possible that you could have a new species of ant in your backyard right now. But before we get too carried away, today we will be talking about just one species of ant, and that is Formica Bradley. Formica Bradley actually lived quite close to me. It's only around a 15 minute walk from my house. What's quite interesting about them is where they nest. They love nesting in sandy fields, which is weird for ants because most of the time they need soil to hold their nest structures together. But somehow these guys get around just fine using sand. So you might be asking yourself, what sets these ants apart from the rest of the ants in the world? What's so unique about them and why would I make a video on them? Well, there's quite a few things that make these guys pretty unique compared to other ants. The first thing is their rarity. I rarely ever see these around where I live, except in one certain spot, never anywhere else in the world. So it makes you wonder just how many of these guys actually exist. Now outside of Manitoba, I'm sure there's more. But inside Manitoba, they only live in a small section where I'm located. So that shows me that I'm probably pretty lucky to have these guys near me. And even when you zoom out, you can still see that there actually isn't that many located in the world. Only a small portion here. Something fascinating I found while researching them is that like most ants, there's not a lot of study done on them. And their Wikipedia page almost has no information on them. Only that they have bright colored workers and the males are nice and shiny. So that just shows you how much information there still is to learn about them. Now the next thing I want to talk about is this. So this is the scientific classification, but what does it all mean? Let's start out with the species, obviously Formica Bradley. The genus is Formica and the family Formicide, which means ant, which also is closely related to wasps. Now Hymenoptera, what does that mean? Hymenoptera is the order. Ants are in the order of Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera basically means a large order of insects. So like wasps, bees, sawflies, and a bunch of other things. There's over 150,000 living species of insects that are under the order of Hymenoptera. Now there's no real point in talking about the other three because going from bottom to top, it just means insect, arthropod, and animal which we would all know. Like, we'd say an ant is an insect, but we would never say this is an ant under the order of Hymenoptera in the family of Formicide, the genus being Formica, and it being Formica Bradley the species. We wouldn't want to be here for too long trying to just say the name of one thing when we could just say an ant. But let's be honest, a lot of us have to ID a lot of the species we keep. So in reality, what I would say and what most people would say is I think this ant is Formica Bradley. But I think we should go a little more in depth with how this species worked. So let's start out with the queens and how they found. Formica Bradley found their nests fully claustral and sometimes even with other queens because they are polygynous. From what I've found from keeping the four queens that I have right now in founding is that they don't mind a taste of honey when most queens usually are afraid to take a bite because they're busy protecting their eggs. They gladly left their eggs for a good 15 minutes just to slurp up some honey. 
which also shows how safe they felt in the environment I was keeping them, which is good for me because then I know I'm doing a good job. In the wild, these ants never nest in anything other than sandy soil. They won't nest in dirt, they won't nest in wood, only in the sand. But now that we've got that wrapped down, what else is interesting about them? Well, I noticed that every nest I came across almost always was near a plant like this. Now, I'm not exactly sure what plant this is, but it grows out in these fields, and it might turn into tumbleweed, but I'm not sure. I could be completely wrong. So, why do they nest in this plant? Well, there's a few reasons, but the first one came really obvious. It has root structure, and when something's nesting in sand, there's not a lot of space under the soil for them to get a grip and hold their nest together, and it can be easily fallen apart. So, my theory was that they love nesting near these plants in order to keep their nests better held together if there was ever a rainstorm or even just something walking on the surface. So this way it doesn't cave in as easily. Now I'm sure this is definitely one of the facts and definitely a reason why they nest on this plant. But I later found out that this species actually milks aphids. And this is interesting because this is not recorded anywhere else. Not on the internet, not on ant wiki, not anywhere. Normally a species of ant has a huge long biography about little tiny things it has, where its nodes are, and all those different things. But this species has absolutely nothing on it. So, I'm not saying that this is a new discovery, but definitely something that is a little interesting, especially because of where this ant lives. A lot of formica do milk aphids, but this formica literally lives in fields and only nests in sand. And aphids probably don't live around sand very much, but for some reason, they live on this plant. So the ants protect them. And not only do they do that, but they build their nest right below them. It's like one big tree of life. The ants, the plant, and the aphids on the plant. They all protect each other. The ants air out the roots and allow them to breathe while nurturing the sand and soil around them, while the aphids on the plants milk the plant for sap and the ants drink it in order for protection. Everyone stays healthy and everyone stays in order. And that concludes this episode on Formica Bradley. It gives you a way more in-depth view on just how different each species of ant can be. From a woodcarver to a sand specialist, each ant is different. And that's why every episode is different. Because there's so much to learn. And the more you know, the more you know, you don't know. And that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Wait! Just kidding. Let's say you just fell in love with this species, and you absolutely just love the way they look. Well, if you live in Canada, I have great news for you. You can order this species from a really good friend of mine. We actually caught them together, and there's around 60 up for sale right now. So if you want one, go contact him on Instagram at antkeeper14. His link will be in the top of the description. Go ahead, DM him, and he'll give you a price range. If it fits for you, great. This species is super awesome and really easy to keep. Now they do get a little bit pricey, and the only reason they do is because of how rare they are. They're only located in a small part of the world, and I'm very lucky to have them really close to me here where I live. But if you're not interested in Formica Bradley, and maybe something else like Campanatus, or a different species of Formica even, or even Laceus, you can also hit up and keeper 14 and he might have something that interests you he sells a lot of different species but you have to make sure that you're located in canada it's illegal to import and export ants out of canada and across borders as you don't want to cause something like fire ants entering canada and wiping out native species he doesn't just sell queens he also sells small colonies if you're interested in that he's a really good friend of mine and i know how much work he puts in to keeping them all alive and well fed he puts an insane amount of time every week in just to keep them all alive. So I'd highly suggest going and checking him out. Anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. I put a lot more time into it than I have with previous videos, as I did a full species documentary. 
I made sure to fact check a lot of my points, and if anything's incorrect, please point me out in the comments. I love constructive criticism, it helps me out and gets me to become a better YouTuber for everyone that watches. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. It really does help. I'll see you guys next week. Uploads will be back on the regular to the best of my abilities. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.